Postgres is a powerful open source object relational database system that uses and extends the SQL language combined with many features that safely store and scale even the most complicated data workloads. The origins of Postgres date back to 1986 as part of the Postgres project at UCLA. Berkeley. Before Postgres, there was something called Ingress. And Ingress stands for Interactive Graphics Retrieval System, which is the very first relational database management system to ever be created. Ingress originally competed against Oracle in the then emerging relational database system market, but eventually lost market share to Oracle, presumably due to the recognition of SQL as the go-to query language, which Ingress unfortunately did not use it at the time. After this is when Ingress later evolved to Postgres, which got its name because it came post-Ingress. You get it? Post-Ingress came after. It's okay if you don't get it. It's okay, it's okay. Now, since then, Postgres has earned a strong reputation for its proven architecture, reliability, data integrity, robust feature set, extensibility, and the dedication of the open source community behind the software to deliver performant and innovative solutions consistently. Postgres runs on all major operation systems and has been ACID compliant since 2001. Now, if you didn't know, ACID stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. If a database operation has these ACID characteristics, it may be referred to as an ACID transaction which means that the transactions of a database will guarantee validity even in the event of errors, power failures, etc. You name it. Now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And no pun intended. Logos. Logos have a lot of power. They are powerful because they are a distinctive, memorable emblem that is often used to promote a product. So let's answer the question then. What is the story behind Postgres choice of an elephant as its symbol? Well, to better understand that, let's look at other logos. Linux has a penguin named Tux. MySQL has a dolphin named Sakila. Twitter has a bird. MailChimp has a chimp, while Firefox has a guess, a fox. How did you know? Well then, why does Postgres even have an elephant, which by the way is named Slonit? Well, before we could even get to that, did you know that the Postgres logo was not always an elephant? In 1996, the Postgres logo was actually a broken brick wall. In 1997, a cheetah was used as part of the Postgres logo. In June of 1998, Further discussion of the PG SQL hackers mailing group was full of various propositions for what the logo could potentially be. For example, a lion, tigress, an alligator, a gazelle, an eagle, a dog, and even a, a bridge. So then why? Why, Chris? Why an elephant? Just tell me why. Well, an elephant logo can be interpreted in many different ways, right? But the most common would be that elephants like Databases are great keepers of information. Elephants are known to be exceptionally smart animals, which is why on July 24th, 1998, it was finally decided. They ended up sticking with an elephant as quoted in one of the emails. An elephant is big, strong, reliable, and never forgets. Now, is that it? <laughs> of course not. Of course, the logo continued to evolve years after that as well and ended up with this the now well-known Postgres logo. Now, the question is, why should you use Postgres? Many websites rely on Postgres as their database, right? For me, myself, as an engineer, I'd also want to view data as it is generated in our databases. We also want to be able to provide dashboards and analytics as the data is being generated at that moment. We want to make it easy for our users that they never have to worry about the data and focus more on essential things. But then how are we able to do this? We do this with Postgres. You see, Postgres has the ability to handle concurrency and a wide range of workloads as a relational database management system. Using Postgres as a transactional system of records and at the same time, offering both client and action dashboards as well as some types of analytics is very possible. So then, what are the pros and cons of Postgres? Pros of Postgres. Number one, open source. There are no license fees, which makes it considerably less expensive, especially for startups. High availability. The high availability of Postgres clusters is maintained by guaranteeing that a backup server will assume control if the primary server fails. And what else? Scalability. The Postgres database supports vertical scalability and can run on bigger and faster machines to increase performance. It is 
compatible with so many languages as a language for triggers and stored procedures. Now, what are the cons of using Postgres? Let's talk about that now. The Postgres database is well suited for vertical scaling, allowing it to run a larger and faster hardware to improve performance. However, when it comes to horizontal scalability, things aren't quite as simple. For example, difficult to administer. Uber itself moved away from Postgres. And one of the reasons they gave was because of its inefficiency when it comes to architecture for rates. Number two, inefficient data replication. Issues with table corruption, poor replication, MVCC support, difficult upgrading to new releases. There's so many cons and of course, so many pros. That's why really it's up to you to determine if Postgres is for you. Now, in conclusion, Postgres is a powerful open source database management system that can be used for a variety of purposes. It's reliable and scalable, making it a great choice for both small and large scale applications. If you're looking for an open source database management system, Postgres is certainly worth considering. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.